Hey guys, just when you thought last lesson was a bit confusing, it's alright, okay? Now, uh, the purpose of last lesson was just to show you that theorem that translates the double integral to the iterative integral. So right now, we're just going to go through a practical example so you know what's going on. You know how I said integrate with respect to x, with respect to y, and how come the limits, you know, are written in terms of the other variable you'll find out in this lesson, okay? We're going to go through an explicit example, rather easy one, but I'm going to go through it in its entirety so that we understand what's going on. All right, so the problem right now is that we want to find a way to define the region R, okay? Now, like I said, the double integral gives us the volume, right? But the volume is also uh, given by the solid, and the solid, the region R determines the size of the solid. So right now, we want to go through a systematic way of finding how we can express R, okay? And that is given by uh, two simple processes. Now, if you want to just skip forward a bit, okay, let's just say we want to uh, evaluate this double integral over here. Right? But we don't know the limits. We want to find the, how we can specify the limits of R so that we can write it as the iterative integral. Well, this is going to be um, an example showing that. Now, remember, the region R is in two types, type 1 and type 2. So right now, we're going to tackle a type 1 first. Okay, a type 1, and then, you know, um, after that, we go through a type 2. So here's the step. Now, if you can get this um, algorithm down very quickly, and besides just two steps, you should have no problem at all. So what is it? Okay, the region R is over here, right? Okay, and we want to find a way to um, specify that. Okay, now, since it's type 1, what can we anticipate? We can anticipate um, A and B, and uh, G1X, and G2X. Okay, we are, we are trying to specify the region R in terms of these quantities over here. Okay, and here's how we're going to do it. Now, firstly, we just draw a vertical line through R. Okay, so it's type 1, we draw a vertical line through R. Right? Okay, and then we just pick any point along that line, and when we go down, okay, the lower limit where it reaches a certain boundary, okay, that is going to be our curve G1 in terms of X, right? Okay, so we're just going down, okay, just going down the line. Now, we go up the line, okay, we, we reach the other boundary, okay, and that is going to be our G2 in terms of X. Now, obviously, these functions are going to be given because, you know, as you shall see later, we're just going to, you know, somehow shape up the region R using those two functions. So, Yes, it seems rather easy, it seems rather obvious, but, you know, in essence, it is. Okay, but, you know, let's just go through an example. Okay, so that's for the G1X and G, um, G2X. Now, how about the left and right limits? Well, we anticipate the A and B is going to be lying on the x-axis, right? Well, that's easy. We're just going to move the line, go left, okay, until we reach the leftmost of region R, the plane region R, okay, and that is going to be A. Alright? And then after that, we move over here, okay? So once we get the left limit, we just move the line right, and then we reach the, the, the boundary again, okay? And then it's gonna be B. Okay, and that's all that is to it. So what we have is that we got region R, we wanna find these quantities A, B, G1, X, G2, X, and that is what we do. Draw the vertical line, go down, G1, X, go up, G2, X, left and right, A and B. It's as easy as that. So what does this tell us? Well, this tells us a systematic way of really uh, define the region R. Okay, and now we're going to translate that to an example and see how we can use it productively. This example, we want to evaluate the double integral of the function x and y, okay, over the region R, okay, where R is enclosed between x is equal to half, x, y is equal to half x, y is equal to root x, x equals to x equals to 4. Now, here's what I'd like to say, okay, this double integral gives us the volume, right? Now, it's not essential that we graph out this function over here. What is this function over here? Well, this function, yes, is the function of um, f, uh, it's just the function f in terms of x and y, but it's really um, z, right? So this, okay, is the surface. Now, why don't you see this over here? Because this is region R, we are still in the x and y plane. Okay, this steps is for us to specify the region R, okay? And we do nothing with the function. Okay, now, if you were a loyal fan of mine and you went through my vector calculus videos, I remember I told you something about the line integral. You got the function and you got the curve. Double integral is something like that. We got the function, okay, in terms of x and y, that's going to give us the surface. And we also got the other component. What's the other component? The other component is region R over here like that. We find region R by doing this uh, step one and step two. So, if you were to graph out the whole thing, which I won't do over here, region R is essentially this one over here, okay? And, and the surface, okay, of z equals to the function f uh, in terms of x and y is this surface over here. We want to find this volume, right? Now, I want to say again, it's not essential that we graph out um, the surface. We don't need to. Well, you can to visualize the thing, but what is more important is r. Well, you know, that's not really strictly speaking, okay, but you decide which one is more important. So what we're doing here is that we are graphing out x and y plane 
on a separate axis, okay? So it's x and y over here. Now the z-axis shoots out, but it's okay. We it, z-axis is not essential for this problem. The problem is defining the region R. So that's what we do. So this is basically graphing out the, in the two-dimensional surface, okay, x and y. So what do we have? Well, we've got a function um, y is equal to the half x, which goes over like that. Uh, y is equal to root x is gonna go over like this, okay? And uh, x goes to x equals four. So um, I limit the, I mean, I marked out the, the curves and the, the points of limits. So let's just apply the steps, okay? So you know what's going on. Draw a line in region R. This is gonna be region R, right? Go down. What is go go now? Reach this line over here. So g one is gonna be equals to half x, okay? We go up. Uh, we reach the curve uh, root x. So g two is gonna be give us to root x. And uh, we go left, we got x equals to 2, we go right, um, x equals to 4. So with this 1, 2, 3, 4, now we can use the theorem that I showed you in the last lesson and evaluate this double integral, okay? So um, let's just uh, leave this over here, I'll just erase this, okay? We should be um, neatly typed up to the right of your screen, okay? I gotta make the videos first, then I type it up. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, okay, remember the theorem that we have the double integral of the certain function Okay, over the region R, now we got our G, G1, G2, um, A and B. So now we can write A and B, bearing in mind again that this is a type 1 region R. So basically we're using the theorem for type 1. Okay, and we write G1x, uh, G2x, okay, and it's the same function. The function stays the same. And sorry, uh, integrate first with respect to uh, Y and then with respect to X. So I'm going to write that out uh, using those um, terms that we have. Okay, X is from 2 to 4. Okay, and we got G1. What's G1? G1 is half x, so x divided by 2. And what is G2? G2 is root x. Okay, the function stays the same. Integrate first with respect to y and with respect to x. Okay, applying the theorem, and this is what we need to evaluate using our partial integration. Remember, partial integration was the second lesson which I told you that you needed for us to, you know, really proceed. Okay, um, okay you just leave this here. Now here is where you know things will get a bit clearer. So this is a function in terms of x in terms of y. Okay, we want to partially integrate that with respect to y, but the limits are in terms of x, right? Okay, so let's see what we get. Well, 2, 4, okay, this we leave this one side first, and then we integrate that, we get x, y squared divided by 2. Holding x as fixed, I uh, integrate with respect to y, and then we've got x divided by 2 as the limits over here. Okay, now Remember, this um, is not written in this notation, but we must know, bear in mind that we have partially integrated the, the integrand in terms of y. So these limits are going into you know, where y is, which is essentially over there. And when we do that, okay, it is not surprising that the expression that we get is this thing over here. x squared divided by 2 subtract x to the cube divided by 8 dx. Now, I hope you can see why it is so. Because now, when we substitute the limits, which are in terms of x, into the positions where it is y, all our y terms, okay, all this is not proper notation, all y terms, okay, are eliminated in place of x. And why do we need to do that? Because later, our sub subsequent integration is in terms of x. That's why we cannot have any y terms inside there. That is why when we partially integrate with respect to y, the limits have to be in terms of x. So that when we substitute inside, we end up with expression in terms of x, and then we would evaluate in terms of x, and what we get is 11 divided by 6. And this number is going to be the volume in units cubed, okay? It's bounded by the surface z is equals to x and y, as you can see over here. Okay, and the region R, which we have went through how to define region R, we will define it this way, which is over here, and this is going to be this volume over here, 11 over 6. Okay, so that is really an explicit example, which I hope it will be clear now. Now, when I studied multiple, multiple integrals, it took a while, but after that, you know, things start falling into place. So, um, some things to point, okay, and this is a very tricky part, advanced analysis, you know, maybe we will go into that. What can you say if we extend the limit to 5? Okay, because that would entail that this is going to be region R plus this thing over here. And, you know, notice that, you know, the, the lines meet. Now, I can suspect that this would give us a negative volume, so we will subtract from there. But it's okay, you know, right now we are just dealing with simple cases. So right now, uh, this lesson was about finding a systematic way to define the region R so that when we have the double integral, we can use a the theorem that we have and then get the iterative integral. Bearing in mind that when we partially integrate with respect to y, we substitute the limits in terms of x so that we get expression in terms of x, integrate that, get us the volume, and there we go. Mission accomplished. Okay? 
Uh, next lesson, we do type two regions. Quick one on that.